I want to challenge you. I want to honor you. Uh, and I want to respect the time. But uh, God put a word on my heart. Just it was Thursday about baptism. I think a lot of us, um, maybe you've never even been baptized. But baptism is a gift from the Lord. Um, a lot of you may have never even seen this before, but the waters, you know, they're straight and they're, they're even, and, but they're level. And when you get in that water, it makes a cross. And when you go down to be buried with Jesus, and then you come back up, it completes that cross. It completes the salvation in your life. And So I, I just wanted to show that we to tell you about that. But also God really gave me a word. There's two things God laid on my heart in Acts chapter 8. Aaron, I just want you to hang with me real quick. I want you to go to verse 34. Acts Amen. chapter 8, verse 34. And uh, this, this was talking about Philip and an Ethiopian. A eunuch called the Ethiopian. And uh, this Ethiopian had never been baptized. There's a lot of people that I talk to in my life that have, have never been baptized. They know Jesus, but they've never really been baptized and immersed into the waters of baptism. It is very important. I want you to listen to my voice real quick tonight. It is very important that you get baptized. You say, why, why do I need to get baptized? Because Jesus did. Amen. If, if Jesus did, I think that we need to be baptized with that. Okay, so in verse 34, this, this Ethiopian was on a chariot. I love what God told Philip at the beginning. He said, Philip, you stay close by that chariot. You stay close by this man because something's going to happen. Some people in this house tonight, maybe you got family members, you got friends at school, you got people in your life that, that are sitting there and standing there, or you pass them daily that, 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 that know Jesus, but have never been baptized in Jesus. And so I want to give you this word. This word really stuck on my heart. In verse 34, this eunuch said to Philip, now I'm reading out the Amplified, it says these words, and the eunuch said to Philip, in verse 34 of Acts chapter 8, I beg of you. Now I want you to think about how powerful it is, Brother Jim. This youth was sitting on a chariot waiting for somebody just to come by and talk to him about Jesus. Yeah. And this, Phil, this, this Ethiopian was sitting on this chariot and Philip come by. He said, Brother Tree, he said, I want you to, I beg you, please tell me about Jesus. See, you've got people in your life right now are begging you to open your mouth and tell them about your best friend named Jesus Christ. you got people at school that are begging. I beg of you. He was begging of him to talk about Jesus Christ. He said, is this man, who, who is he talking about himself? Or is he talking about someone else? I just thought it was amazing that stuck in my heart. How we think that we live in such a, a country and a time where God's not alive. I'm here to testify tonight. These are the best days that you could possibly be alive. This is the day that the Lord has made and we should be glad and rejoice in that. And you should be thankful that you're living in the day of the Lord. And you should be thankful that God's giving you a deep word in your spirit that you can open your mouth and somebody say, I'm begging you, please tell me about Jesus. Amen. Amen. So you've got people right now, even in this room tonight, I guarantee with a with a room with all these many people in it, somebody probably don't know Jesus Christ. So I'm going to believe tonight that some of you are out there, you've seen miracle, 14 of them. They are born again and baptized in Jesus' name. And we see these activities that God is doing, but tonight, I am begging you. I'm going to turn this around, I'm going to put it back on you. I'm begging you, before your next breath, ask God to come into your heart and save your soul. I am begging you, don't walk out them doors the same way you walked in. I am begging you and pleading with you that if you're ever going to get saved, you're in a good house to get saved at all. Tower. And I can just see Ezekiel standing up and declaring, Don't go to hell. He said, Because every day when someone passes you and they're begging you to know about Jesus and you don't tell them about your God, the Bible says their blood is on your hands. I'm declaring tonight that everybody in this house, right now, that nobody's lost. That if the horn were to sound, all that's going to be left behind is a bunch of clothes. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. All that's going to be left behind is this is you. Hallelujah. I feel that. I'm begging you tonight. I'm begging you tonight. Hey, we still got water in that baptistry. Yeah. I'll dump you right now in the name of Father <laughs> Son. I'll be glad to. You say, Brian, I've never felt this. Welcome to church. Brian, I want more of it. Come get some of it. Hallelujah. I'm begging you tonight. I'm begging you tonight.
before you leave, you've got, to ask, you've got everybody in here has got to answer this question. If you were to die, come on now. And you will. And you will. How many know one day your heart's going to stop? It's going to, the old ticker's going to quit ticking. It's appointed that a man wants to die, and then comes the judgment. Amen. We know the Bible, but do you have the Bible? Yeah. Are you the Bible? Are you the Word of God? You may be the only Bible that people read. Right. Amen. What are they reading in your life? And I love what this man did. This is stuck in my heart. He said, Phil, I beg you, tell me about God. And just stuck in my spirit. I beg you to tell me about Jesus. Please don't let me die and go to hell. I beg you to tell me about God. And I love on down through here. Listen to this. In verse, uh, verse 36. It says, as they continued along the way. I love this part. God, I thank you for this word. It says, they came to some water. Listen to this. The eunuch exclaimed, See here? Here's water. I love that. Here it is. Ooh, there it is. You know there it is. There's water. There's water. On it. There's water right there. And this eunuch, I love what he said. He's really stuck in water. He says, What is to hinder my being baptized? That's right. Question is this. What's hindering me? Why are you trying to stop this? Why are you trying to stop the activity of God? Here's the other time, Brian, y'all loud out there. Hey, that's right. Yeah. Hey, Brian, say, you know, y'all just got, what's going on? Here's what's going on. People being saved. People being baptized. It's great things. Not because of us. It's just that we're welcome with the Holy Ghost. Yeah. And when you welcome God, He'll do what He's appointed to do yeah. to save the Lord. I just love this. They got out of the chariot. <laughs> they didn't have the proper attire on. And here's what happened. Beautiful picture. I beg you to tell me about Jesus. Tell me about Jesus. He led him to the Lord. Verse 36, he, he baptized him. He baptized him, but the first water hole they came to. And I love what it says. says listen to this. Read the Bible. It says they both went down. It says they both went down. Not just one, but they, they both, not because somebody slipped, but they, they both went down. And when Philip came up, the Bible says the Lord took him, he disappeared. He said, Brian, do you believe that? Yep. Sure do. If I didn't, I sure wouldn't be here not wasting my time on your time. I believe the Word of God. I believe it's real. I believe it's that. I believe it's heaven. And I also believe it's heaven. So here's the thing, I would be crazy. I'd be crazy. Just to sit here and say, guys, I hope I hope have a good night. God bless you. Thank you for being here. Good night this week. And some of your hearts may stop tonight. This may be my last sermon. That just hit me. This may be my last sermon. You know how I'm going to go out and coach? Preaching the Word of God. So guys, you've got to get this. The orders is salvation first. Y'all listen to me. Everybody say salvation first. Salvation first. Yeah, not baptism. Y'all listen to me. You can get well if you want to. You can get in the baptistry of a dry devil and come out of a wet devil. But you're still a devil. What changes is when God touches you. What changes, y'all listen to me. Don't drop, don't drop me. What changes you is when you truly say, God, come into my heart. Yeah, amen. Save myself. Forgive me of my sins. Yeah. God, I don't want to act like this no more. Amen. God, change me from the inside out. Amen. What baptism does, it shows you what has happened to me inwardly, like what you said. It's an outward expression of what happened to you inwardly. 
He got saved first. Everybody say he got saved first. Yes, yeah. He got baptized second. Yes. And the third day he started preaching. Yes. What? I can't talk. And this was an Ethiopian in the Jewish days. Don't you think he fit in? No. But he started standing out. Oh, this is a good word. Thank you, Holy Spirit. God did not design me or you to fit in. He designed me and you to stand out. The most important question you'll ever answer in your life. You say, God, I'm saying, what about the person sitting beside of you? Are they? What about the one in front of you? Are they? What about the one behind you? Are they? So listen to me. What we're going to do real quick, we're going to pray this prayer. It's a dangerous prayer. It's pretty simple. Lord, save somebody. Yeah. <laughs> How many of you know that's God's heartbeat? Save somebody. Listen, if you die here tonight and go to hell, it's your fault. Because God is here. Yes. So here's the thing. We're going to do an invitation. A lot of churches don't do this no more. I don't know why. Because I know when people's around, when there's people, there's problems. When there's people, there's hurt. So tonight, he got saved first. He got baptized. If you've never been saved, you get saved. Now, amen? amen? If you've never been baptized, hallelujah. Well, come on. We're baptized. You say, brother, are you for real? I am for real. I'll do it right now. I'm that crazy. Love to get you wet. Well, here's the thing. Step three. He had to tell somebody what happened. Yeah. See, a lady, what I've got in me, I can't, I, I gotta give it away. I can't become a Christian and go hide in the closet. I can't, I, I can't be quiet. I know you say, well, that's just because you're a rapper and you got a big mouth. Make me love it. <laughs> but man, when you fall in love with God, and He sprints down and grabs you and walks you out of the pits of hell. Because I deserve to die to hell. But somebody named Jesus was on the cross. And He looked down and people were spitting on Him. Ran a spear in His side. And blood and water just down on His side. Father, forgive them. Yeah. Forgive them. What a hero. What a man named Jesus. Then we all deserve to die and go to heaven. Tim wants you stable on a Wednesday about 2.30 in the afternoon. God knew he appointed you for salvation. And you got born again. And then, hallelujah, your families came together. Your wife this morning said, you know what? My husband got it right, and now I got to get it right. For the first time, first time, get in the baptistry. I bury you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. To be buried with Jesus, hallelujah, and to rise with Jesus. And tonight, Tim, if you want to die, according to the word that's wrote in the Bible, it's hasta la vista, I'll see you in heaven. Yeah. I beg you, just as the Ethiopian looked at his friend, he said, I beg you, tell me about Jesus. They think they got him out of the school. Now I've got news. There's a wave coming through this community. There's teenagers like never before. They're alive to
truth in the name of Jesus. Don't miss it tonight. Don't miss it tonight. Don't miss it tonight. God may be calling your day right now. Come. Come. I beg you. Come. I beg you guys. Come. Just like you in your body. Tell me about Jesus. I don't want to die. Go to hell. I beg you. Tell me. Right now, what's hindering you? You say, God, what's going on? Watch this. If you worry about you and quit worrying about her, God's got her. Amen. Amen. Hey, this is all good right here. Amen. What about you? Amen. What about you, Lord God? What about you, Lord God? The heart stops where you go. I beg you. I beg you. You see, when the Holy Spirit shows up, He'll do He will save, deliver, and set free. So, Lord, in the name of Jesus, keep saving. Keep delivering. Keep forgiving. How many of y'all need to be forgiven? If your hands are not up, you need to be forgiven right now. 